Y'all, here y'all. I'm at the Petrol in Spokane. Across the street over there in that kind of tan building, that's utility trailer, and my trailer is over there. And y'all can see. Welcome to winter. It is 46 damn degrees here in Spokane. I got my long stuff on. Get ready to go in here and wash laundry because I gotta wait. <laughs> I got I gotta wait, y'all. So I delivered my load this morning. The load I had came out of Stockton, California. Frozen food. And I'm lucky because they said usually when he gets loads, as heavy and, and as, as large as mine was, is usually damage I had. This is zero damage. Piece of crap trailer. But zero damage. So, y'all say I got the San Fran hat on. I like this hat. I hope I get back to the 49. I'm going to get some more hats from them. I really like their stuff. And I might go and do that three for 30 because I actually, there. yeah, I'm going I'm to get some more. So when I get back to 40, 49er, I'm going to get me some more hats. Um, My dad, like, when you coming, when you coming? So I think he's excited I'm coming, even though he's kind of, he's, my, my biological father is a hot mess. He's a sperm donor. He's not really a dad. So, God, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a little, I call him a little boy. He's a little boy. He's a male. He's a, he's a grown male. He don't, he don't get the man title. Mm-mm. Some of y'all, I'm sorry, y'all don't get the man title. I, I don't know too many men. I've met a lot of males, or grown males, but I ain't met too many men. And when I know, I know when I meet a man who's a man, man, I know. <sighs> not that I'm looking for that, because I'm really not. I'm, I'm, uh, ugh, I'm good. Go over there. You need to go over to the other side. I'm good. <laughs> Leave me the hell alone. Um. So back to the subject hand. Oh, you don't have to take that. Oh, I did get a curl. I did my hair this morning and it curled. I'll take the hat off. So, it's cold. <laughs> Put the hat back on. So, it's cold. It's 46 degrees. Um, I don't have to truck on idle. I had to, I had to, I had that bunk heater on last night. The bunk heater, y'all, for those of you who are new to trucking, for those of you who just watch it because y'all enjoy watching it, we have, so a lot of trucking companies and trucks, most trucks come with a bunk heater. What a bunk heater is is when the truck is cut off, you hit this button and it heats the truck for about 10 minutes and you set whatever temperature you want up to I don't know how hot it is but it get hot and there's a little hole back underneath the bunk and it's a heater and you don't have to the truck doesn't have to be on but it got nice and toasty it felt good but it was like 42 degrees this morning when I woke up and uh, very happy I did that I'm gonna do what I carry what I get for winter weather I might do it in this one I might do it in this one um, so let's ramble about the, the trailer. So the load I had came out of Stockton, California. It was uh, frozen. Was it frozen? I don't know if it was frozen. It was 30. Oh, 28. Yeah, I guess that would be. That would be. Yeah, it's frozen. 28 degrees. So frozen food because obviously 32 degrees is fro it's freezing weather, right? So it was frozen low. Top to bottom. Uh, I did not see this trailer um, except for just the back of it when I closed the doors and it was already loaded. So I didn't see this trailer empty. I dropped a wonderful, beautiful trailer that ran really good off <laughs> into one of their other yards, which I wish they would have probably loaded that trailer because then I wouldn't have to be going through this. I am rolling hours, so I'm down to an hour and 49 minutes. I don't have no, no time. <laughs> I'm rolling hours, so my trailer is across the street over here from the Petro off of I-80 to 42. And I'm going to get me a shower <laughs> and wash my laundry because there ain't no in hell I'm getting anywhere. They had sent me a pre-plan that was going to take me into Wenatchee and Yakima uh, to pick up stop and then go into Utah to deliver. Unfortunately, the load said make sure you have a chute and I'll tell you what a chute is in a minute and make sure that you can set your reefer to continuous. I'll tell you what that is in a minute. So, unfortunately people, my trailer <laughs> does not have a chute so when they emptied it i was able to look inside of raggedy said trailer and see there was no chute um so i immediately sent a message to dispatch and said look i don't have a chute up in here how do you want me to proceed and they said call they call it on road or breakdown same thing so contact on road and the nice guy, he was very nice. He said, ma'am, let me, where are you at? And I told him, where are you going? Told him. 
he said, let me find something between those two spots to you take the trailer into. And it really wasn't that far. It was about 40 minutes from where I was at. He said 20. It was actually 40 because you have to go through this small but town. <laughs> of, of, well, you have to go through this little area of Spokane. And there you have to drive very slowly. Plus it's very curvy. Um, but I wasn't loaded so that didn't matter. But you still had to be respectful of the traffic. So between 25 and a small town, 30, 35. So that's what it did. And also trying to find a little street to turn on to get to this. So why I didn't have me go the same way? I have no idea. It, this GPS. Oh, prayerfully, if all my money's right on Friday, this GPS is gonna be just like a secondary referral system. Cause I'm gonna go on and get my garment. This that that thing is on crack cocaine. It it. I'm coming up, and usually it will say turn here. It it didn't even talk. It didn't. She didn't talk. So I passed the day. She talked when she. She's an asshole. Cussing out this GPS. It's just a butthole. Oh, Jesus. It's a butt to the hole. This GPS sucks. Big win. So, anyway, the trailer's over here at Utility Trailer being repaired. Um, the chute is the fabric cloth that goes across the top. What it does, it blows the air to circulate within the trailer, the cold air. If that's not there, you can still get air, but it you have a more chance of your stuff not staying the same temperature so where i'm picking up they have a strict policy that there has to be a shoot because they don't want their their produce to go bad and we also where we're delivering to is a very persnickety client i know them quite well and they will reject that crap if they look up in there and that shoot ain't there but once they got in there and start looking around there's a whole bunch of other damage on the inside of this badge on the <laughs> inside I could have told them that just from looking from the outside that it's jacked. So, again, I picked the trailer up, loaded. So, it was be actually, it was being loaded when I got there. So, I didn't get to see the inside near the bulkhead. But it's missing the bulkhead. The uh, refrigeration lines were bent. I guess bent up in there. So, they rubbing. So, it's got like close to $500 repair just on that. Plus, whatever they're going to pay to put that damn chute in. And so, they're repairing it. But... Y'all gonna love this. And it's kind of funny. It's sad, but funny. So, while I'm there, I say to him, I said, look, you know, I just want to go and get the temperature set, but I can't switch to continuous. Can you come out here and show me if I'm doing something wrong? He said, he came out. I said, I'm getting a message about a lock. Y'all gonna love this. So, this nice guy from utility, he came out. He said, oh, you do this. He's like, honey, you have to call your company. They got you locked out. You can't, <laughs> oh, baby, you can't change to continuous. They got it set for cycle. That's all it can do. You can change the temperature, but you can't change crap else. I was like, oh, okay, thank you. So I dropped the trailer over there. Petro's over here. Shannon is very de-stressed. I came here, got me some damn lunch. Went to the bathroom, get ready to go get my laundry, and take a shower. Because I'm now down to 1 hour and 45 minutes, so I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Today is done. The most I can do is bob till over there and get that trailer and come back over here and park. And if they open 24 hours, I'm going to tell her, you know, ma'am, I'm out of hours. Can I come after my sleeper birth and pick that up? Because if they 24 hours, that's what's going to happen. Because right now i got a parking spot right near the damn door. I take my shower and go to sleep because i got to take this trailer... All the way to Idaho, to one of our terminals, drop that bad boy off, and get this other empty they just put on me. And then, I think they're having me either do the same load, or they're going to take this load, give it to somebody else, which is okay. Because, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's already starting off not good, so that already tell me enough. And then, because I, I was supposed to be to Utah on the 22nd, and I ain't even loaded yet, and today's the 20th. And I'm supposed to have a load today at 4 o'clock. That's not happening. And I'm supposed to have another load tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. I don't know if that's happening. Because I still got to go and pick up the trailer. But it's only 100 miles away. So that's like an hour or two. Well, two hours. So I still got to go pick up this other trailer. And uh, we also are in inclement weather, as you can see. And again, the Shannon does not drive crazy. I'm not trying to drive crazy just to go get a load. Safe at all costs. Slow if necessary. You don't like it? Take your ass around. So, they got more work that need to be done. So, what initially was two hours, 
is now going to probably be a lot to hell more than two hours. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get my laundry together and uh, go take this over to uh, go in here and get me a shower and get my laundry because it's shower day. Shower day. And it worked out good because I got free showers at Petro. And it's a nice Petro too. They even got a Starbucks on the front. So it's I, that's I-80. I, I think it's I-90. I-90. Exit 2... 272? I think it's 272. It's a Petro. You can't miss it. I think it's 272. I think it's 272. And uh, they got a, a Starbucks. It's not inside the Petro. It's on the, It's like an independent Star. It's nice. Very nice. And it's a clean Petro. So it's, I think this is a relatively new Petro. And so nice little store. And uh, you know, I'm get my laundry gear together and go in here, wash laundry. I think I'm going to take my shower first so I can wash the gear I got on right now. I can wash my sweats and stuff. Because I only have one pair of sweats. So when I go, he, my, my dad said, when you come in, so I'm going to start ordering stuff to be sent to his house. And let him know uh, to just take stuff. Because I'm going to order stuff to be sent to the house. But they got me. They've All of a sudden, I got this increase in miles. Again, Shannon don't want to train. So I don't know if that's what they think. That's not happening. Um, or uh, Shannon's not leasing a truck. No, not a used one. Unless I'm the only truck I would actually buy is the one I'm driving. I actually, I like this truck. Um, there's a, a little issue I need to go have handled, but I actually like this truck. So that's about the only one I would be tempted to buy. And the only way I would do that is if I could pay for it on my regular runs and not have to train. I don't want to train and make money. I would make money. Um, but based on how they run, I don't know. We'll see what's gonna happen when the merger. Like I said, I'll probably be here till either the end of the year or beginning of the next year. And if I don't, it's got to be some significant changes. But I'm going to I'm gonna be looking at all my options between those times. So if something come up better, y'all know how we have to do. Alright, so what do I do for winter? Well, this winter, I want to try to get a Carhartt jacket. Carhartt, guys, if y'all can get some Carhartt gear, the bomb. Also, I had a pair of boots, but I forgot them. But again, you you know, when I went on the trainer truck, you're limited as to what you... And they're in my storage, and I got them back when I was at Werner. And they're comfortable as hell. They're warm. Uh, they have skid-resistant soil. You also try to find boots that have oil-resistant, skid-resistant. My father worked for the railroad, so he used to get free boots every year they sent them. I don't know if he still has a pair, because if he does, I'm going to see if they fit. Because me and him were about the same shoe size. <laughs> for whatever reason and I think it's just because of the swelling that happened with the ankle I've gone up to like a ten and a half in men's and my father is like a nine and a half but some of his shoes he has larger because the boots um, the only thing I don't like his I think that's a steel toed one they used to send them and they sent them a nice I mean like three four hundred dollar pair of boots the railroad paid for all of that and every year you got free boots so he got free boots and some other stuff but anyway I'm gonna order a Carhartt jacket um, I don't know if I'm getting that this time. I may have that sent to Phoenix. I'll get something right now. What I have keeps me warm. These thermal shirts like this. This is the bomb. Honestly, I just walked into Petro and this is all I had on. But I also have that jacket back there, which is actually nice. And I got that at Burlington. I had a heavier jacket, but it's more of a what I used to wear to when I was in office. So what I'm work, looking for is I'm going to look for a, a more of a utilitarian male, men's jacket. And for my women, I'm just keeping it real. Y'all want to be out here and be dainty, you can. And there are some women who are very f feminine. That's not me in general. I'm not a very feminine. I'm not. I'm a big old tomboy. So I'm not the femi girl at all. I'm a big old butch tomboy. I don't, mm, mm, that a femi stuff, that's not me. Um, but there's some very effeminate women that are doing trucking. And maybe they do have, you know, all dainty because that's just who they are. It's pure people. And I'm not judging that. But I'm a, I'm a basic kind of cat. So... You want to get you a good jacket. Uh, I would say at this time, lots of sweats. Um, you see some of the older truckers, they do um, overalls. I might get a pair of overalls, big men's overalls. Um, but I like sweatpants because they keep you warm on your legs. Um, again, I do the uh, compression socks because we drive a lot. That reduces your chance of blood clots. So I do the compression socks. Um, 
which is really good. Um, I don't know if you guys saw Junior Hernandez. I think it's a Junior Hernandez. He had a guy. I think his name was Rodney. And Rodney died um, from a blood clot. So definitely, um, you guys may want to look at that. Um, they're not very expensive. Um, I think Bright Life or Bright Life is who I get it from. I'm a big girl, so they have for people with big calves. Um, but even you have regular ones. So you can also get them at Walmart, um, Walgreens, um, CVS. If you have normal size legs. But if you have if you have fat legs like I do, or fat, you know, your, your legs at the bottom, then I recommend you go on, I think it's Bright Life, whatever. You can do a Google search, and they have different ones. Measure your calf and just say, you know, large calf compression socks. You can talk to your doctor. They can also recommend where to get those from, and sometimes your insurance might pick it up. Um, I do undershirts. So you see I have t-shirts. I have uh, t-shirts, and I ordered them Amazon, very cheap. But you also can get Big Men's Catalog or Big Men's Store. Um, whatever kind of t-shirt you like. But I do a cotton t-shirt underneath. Um, let's see what else, what else, what else, what else, what else. Um, oh, I have skull caps, which I'm actually going to get under the bunk here in a little bit. And I'm pulling my, I think, I hope I brought them with me. Um, I have skull caps. And so like the, you know, the knitted hats. Definitely those are a must in the winter weather. Um, gloves. And I think, I hope I brought those too. If I didn't, I'll get a pair. But you need some good gloves. You need gloves for just, if you go outside, just talking to the shipper. But you also need gloves that if they get wet, it doesn't seep through. Because fro ice, like snow, ice, like that 32 degree weather. And if your hands get wet, you're not going to have a good day. Your hands going to hurt. If you have to chain, you're going to need something different too. I Again, I've tried to avoid the chaining like the plague. So, um, I have not on my own ever had to chain a truck. I call ahead for road conditions, and I believe that you can uh, truly avoid chaining. Uh, as soon as the snow starts falling, <laughs> pull the hell over. I mean, if you get a good snow, you need to get off the road, and then you need to just park it for a little bit. If it's just light, but like if, if you're like in the, I've been in Detroit, when it's that, that um, lake, lake effect snow. You should have seen us, the line of truckers, just heading off the freeway, going to the truck stop. And we all parked and sat in the window like this the whole time, looking. So, you definitely want to um, do that. Now, on my truck, I keep automatically keep um, rubbing alcohol. I keep the green, but I also keep the 91%, which I'm going to do a bit video on why I do that, because I do it as a preventative for bed bugs. And... Because as truckers, you may stay in a hotel and you never know when you bring it on board. So I do that as a preventative. I've had two friends, uh, one who got them from a, a relative and the other one, she got it while at a hotel. And so, and then I, when I was working for Aetna, one of the customers called the girl next to me because I worked provider side. And that lady was a truck driver and I stayed at a hotel and brought bed bugs on her truck and was bit all up on her back and stuff. It was a hot mess. But anyway, so... I do it as a preventative because I'll spray my bed down, the seats down. If I go stay somewhere, you can, I mean, you can pick them up from anywhere. That's, that's, that's just how, that it's like an epidemic now in the U.S. So I do some preventative things to keep those off my truck. Um, or if they end up on my truck so they don't survive. <laughs> okay. And I'll go through what my preventative is for that because it's something that they don't really tell you to do. And when I got to Phoenix and I got this truck, I bombed this truck and set this, this crap in the heat. Because they can't survive in 120 plus degree weather. Um, and they can't survive in a certain temperature cold. But Arizona gets hot. So it's like when I was there, it was like 113, 114. So inside this cab, it's easily 130, 140 degrees. That right there, it ain't, it ain't surviving. And my friend who had gotten them, he helped me. We sprayed it and then put a bomb in here and set this thing for three days right in the middle of the sun. And so, if there was anything in here, it's very dead. And even the bunk, the bed, when I got the bed, I told you I did the plastic. But then I put my stuff in um, a bed bug cover. My, my, my uh, mattress is in a bed bug allergen cover. And like I said, I do all that for a reason. Because if you get them, you don't want them to uh, infest the mattress. And I did have the old mattress and new mattress on here to add extra cushioning. So, I put those both in there. So, if there was anything in that, it ain't going to get out. They in there to die. <laughs> just, just keep it real. Um, kitty litter. So, some people are like, kitty litter? And we talked about this in my orientation when I came back to the company I'm at. And everybody's looking like, what y'all gonna do with the kitty litter? Kitty litter helps with traction. So, if you're in ice and snow and you get stuck, put kitty litter down by the tires. 
matter of fact I almost recommend that if you're gonna park and it's really icy at that truck stop put kitty litter down um, the other thing is for those of you who never driven in inclement weather your trailer air supply don't don't put those brakes on leave them off push leave them pushed in when you park the only brake you're gonna use is your tractor brake and you want it to hold the reason is your air supply for your tractor or your trailer <coughs> if those freeze it's hell getting those things to loosen up and you're gonna slide more with locked locked um, brakes so leave that engaged so you want to push it in to supply the air and leave it in so when you go to park for the night or morning or whenever you're gonna to go to sleep or if you're at some shipper or whatever only use your yellow don't use your red leave your red pushed in and um, don't you don't you don't want to activate them so like right now I'm pulled out but if it was snowing the red would be in and the yellow would be out to hold the trailer and the, and the tractor um, and that way if you don't want the brakes to freeze and that can happen so rubbing alcohol uh, the reason I use the rubbing alcohol is I actually will put that into the uh, window washer fluid to help it not freeze you in addition um, you can um, in addition is so you can do that you can do regular drinking alcohol but y'all shouldn't have that on your truck um, let's see what else I'm trying to think what else I use it for yeah so that and you can put it in the windshield washer fluid but if it's in there you just put it in there um kitty litter for traction I'm trying to think what else I do oh anti-gel for your fuel so after a certain temperature even diesel will freeze so or you know or you know so there's an anti-freeze gel to keep it from gelling up because it'll, it'll get thick so there's anti-gel in there and I forgot who it is Howie's I think Howie's something you can get that and you need to really check because one is like a conditioner and the other one is actually the f one one keeps it from freezing and one does something else so you gotta check because one they do two different things there's two different ones I think from Howie's and you may need both when I was at Conway is when I got educated on those because no other trucking company had really sat down and told us about them but during certain temperatures that's when Conway said we want you to put these in the tank um so I'll have I'll have that on the truck I'll get that what else what else what else people what else what else what else I'm trying to think what else so we talk jacket we talk shoes under gear thermal sweats um, you definitely want to get like I said a good pair of boots waterproof skid resistant oil resistant um, I will tell you even though it's those things I have been in those boots on ice you still are going to slide so you have to be very cautious of how you walk if you're on ice you can definitely hurt yourself i would never been in ice until I was in uh, was it Nebraska it was Nebraska hole in the wall truck stop um, and I was on ice so definitely you want to uh, you know be cautious once you do the ice and snow I got a new driver who uh, shout out to Tyrone if you watch this um, I'm not his trainer but he had come out training when I was coming off home time he's a really cool brother so I just gave him some advice we exchanged information you know feel free to call me um, gave him trucker bills information uh, so if he has any questions I got to tell Bill I gave his information if he has any questions he can call Bill and he's checking in with me today and I guess they've been keeping him in the southern region I said well that's very good except he is going to Utah so he don't know he hasn't hit snow yet but Utah gets some freaking snow so um, yeah but anyway yeah so I'm up here right now and, it, and believe it or not when I dropped this load up here in Spokane it was a blue sky within minutes ominous clouds so and then we got rain right now like I said I'm getting ready to put my laundry together this video is 24 minutes didn't mean for it to go that long I'm gonna call this the Jack trailer the Jack reefer that's gonna and I oh and here's the funny part so they're gonna fix all that and I still got to go take this damn thing and um wow guys I just got news about that 383 Powerball mineral was charged with something <laughs> some damn criminal I gotta read that um go figure be somebody either half dead or some damn criminal win the 303 383 million dollar Powerball that's some crap for your butt 
<laughs> oh, baby. Um, but the reefer, I gotta go take this dang thing because I can't change the temperature all the way to Lewiston, Idaho. Drop it off and exchange it for another reefer because it gotta go to a, a, a reefer tech because we can't change the temperature setting. The company has me locked out. So let's pray that the next one I get, I can change to continuous. It's just jacked. Anyway, y'all, 